Well, what does he do for a living? Uh, pleasure horse, Western Pleasure. Horse. Yeah. Uh, got some issues in the back. He's had some uh, stifle issues and some hock issues. Uh, that's the main concern on the horse. Sure. Uh, otherwise, he's been pretty good. And he does his job all right, despite those issues. And uh, what works best for him on the front? Uh, I've been using the SX, SRX uh, roller, like shoe on the front. Sure. Uh, worked pretty good on him. Behind, we've tried various options, and we came up with maybe just trying him barefoot on him to see how he wore or what he was doing. It didn't seem to make a lot of difference. So that's kind of the issue they'd like analyze or whatever to you know, see what's going on. And I appreciate you bringing that up because sometimes shoes aren't an option. And it's good to try it without it. And that's an open-minded farrier too. <laughs> Excellent. And uh, how old is he? You have any he's idea? Just Twenty. Twenty. So he's he's been at it for a while. Yes. Yes. All right. And if uh, we could just see him walk, get an indication of his footfall and gait. And while I'm watching him walk away, I want to see how closely those feet are going together. I find him going very close. I can see that uh, his footfall is hard lateral on the front, on the outside, uh, due to his base narrow stance. All right, and if we could just turn around, we'll look at him a little closer. By walking around, watching him turn, when he's turning, I'm watching his ears if they're back. If uh, his ears go back and he gets grumpy, it's an indication that it's not a comfortable feeling when he's going in a tight circle in either direction. And as I'm walking around, I'm looking for flexural deviations, whether he's back at the knee, forward of the knee, his hoof pastern axis, whether he's sickle hocked, and he is quite sickle hocked, comes in on the hind limbs. I'm looking at the musculature on either side and because he's not so tall I can stand above him and look over his shoulders and see if there's a difference in his shoulders which I see from here. I'm also looking at the symmetry of his rump and following my eyes down to see if there's a difference in the muscles from one side to another. And that will change depending on how he is stressed or standing here on this rubber mat. I'm going to look from the other side and keep walking along, look at the back, look for scar tissue from saddle sores, girth sores, deviations in the limb. I'm looking for angular deviations and as I walk around here and then look at this, this hawk, you can see the size of it. It's, it's very big and when I palpate it, it's very hard so we assume that there's bone spavin, that would be defined or diagnosed by a veterinarian. Another thing I see is on the hair here, it's all rough and it could be just shedding or it could be a dermatitis. And I bring that up because if a horse has a serious dermatitis in the fetlock, it can be very dangerous for the hoof care professional to work on them as they stomp or pull their feet away from you because of the irritation. I'm walking around to the front, again looking at the flexural deviations. He's very straight through here. The, uh, the pastern angle is very straight, very upright horse. And so when I was told he had a roller motion shoe on, I think that's a beautiful idea for this horse. It's very straight. I'm lo looking at the musculature here. I've looked it over the back. And as I'm standing and looking the, at the horse in, uh, as it's static, standing still, I'm looking for deviations there. I'll define those deviations more accurately by pulling those feet forward and looking down the limb and looking at what direction those hooves go. And I see them coming out of the radius, through the carpus, through the cannon bone, in at the fetlock completely normal, maybe just a little rotation down there. And that's our left four, and I'll go to the right four and do the same thing. And follow down through the radius, down through the carpus, to the fetlock, 
down to the ground. A similar deviation. Then I'll take the limb back underneath the horse, natural range of motion. I'm going to look at the height of the heels, compare them. I'm evaluating the wear of the shoe. Where is this horse wearing the most? And because he's base narrow, he's going to wear more laterally towards the outside. Feeling the flexibility, there's a little stiffness there, especially down in the coffin joint, pastern joint. It's not so flexible. He is a 20 year old horse, so we can expect that. Now go to the other limb, do the same thing. Again, lack of mobility, lack of flexion. A little stiff. His knees feel good. I'll do the same thing with the hind limbs. And if you see an indication of some issue like this big hock, be a little careful. That horse may be sensitive to how far it lifts that limb. He's helping. You see that resistance right there. He's got a concern. I'm going to let him relax. Let him relax. Be conscious of his pathology, take it easy, keep it low. I'm feeling the flexion or the lack of flexion there. Looking at the, the length of the wall. I'm looking at the, the deviation that I see present. And there's actually a couple of them. If you follow down to the fetlock, from the fetlock to the pastern joint, he goes in. And then from the pastern joint down, he goes out again. And if I look at the wear of his hooves, he's wearing hard on this outside here. And if I pull that forward, I'm going to be gentle because I'm conscious of his issues. I can follow down through. From the fetlock, you can see he goes in. From the passion joint, coffin joint, he comes out again. In the end, he's still base narrow, meaning he walks close together, puts a lot of wear on the lateral side, outside. Feel the resistance, take it easy with him, be gentle, don't saddle it over your hip, let it drop in a natural range of motion, follow down through there, a similar confirmation, because he's base narrow, he's wearing more on the outside or lateral side. The toes look, look good, they're not overly worn. I'm going to pull it forward in the natural range of motion. And again, we'll follow the, the limb down and then you can see the secondary angular deviation as the horse goes in, then out, goes out. Fetlock ferris, pastern valgus. And this one has a little more flare on the lateral toe. You can also see that the deviation is greater on this right hind than it was on the left hind. And if we look at his conformation from behind, and you follow this limb down, he's somewhat bull-legged, meaning he's going to have a lot of compressive stresses on the inside of the hock, a lot of elongation stresses of soft tissue on the outside. It causes factors like this. It can cause factors like that. I'm going to square him up some. I want to look again at the musculature. There's no huge difference, there is a subtle difference, and it's interesting that he's more full here than he is here. You would think that this limb would be the one that was compromised and not being used as much. But here we see a smaller muscling. Especially in mature horses, be conscious of their inability to flex so much 
and it's more important to keep them within the natural range of motion for their comfort. It'll make the process of caring for the hooves a lot easier for you and for the horse if you can keep that limb underneath the body. Don't stretch it way out. Nails that are sticking up, you can further ease the process of pulling them individually by putting your creaser in at an angle and just giving them a tap to knock that loose. I'll use the pull-offs and pry between the heel of the shoe, the heel of the foot, and pry back towards myself. Pry back towards myself. Set the shoe back down to the heels, pull the nails individually. If I can't get those nails with my pull-offs, then I'm going to use the crease nail pullers, which will clamp right in there over the nail head to allow me to pull those nails individually. Then using the hoof pick, I'll pick the collateral sulcus around where the shoe was. Using a brush, I'll further clean that up. It saves my knives, keeps the edge on. And using my knife, I will trim at the point of the frog, finding a uniform tissue texture with the frog. I'm finding it quite rapidly there. I don't have a great deal to take off. I'm going to leave that horse the natural protection that it has. I'll clean up the bars. Clean some of the dirt out. You can see that we have a split here in the heel. I'll take note of that so I can take some stress off of that area. Then using the nippers, I'll follow the trail that I have made. Go for a more uniform wall thickness. And before I do any rasping or flattening on this hoof, I want to set it down and look at it on a flat surface. When I'm looking, I'm looking at the hairline to see if I have areas that are elevated. One side that's longer than another, or another. These are all guidelines. It's not that every horse has to have this. These are guidelines that I use to help me trim hooves. I'm also taking into consideration what the horse does, where the horse lives, how the horse is cared for. I felt that he was just a little high on the outside toe quarter. When I'm trimming the heels back, running a line down through the center of the frog, I want a line perpendicular to that line to adjust my heels. If the horse is mature and there's a lot of correction to be made, it's an excellent idea to 
do it in segments. Meaning, I'll do some of it now, shorten the chewing cycle, and next time I'll go a little more. Be conservative and treat often. I'm going for a uniform wall thickness now. I'll see how flat I have it. Careful with your thumb because your thumb will automatically adjust that hoof. And reevaluate it again. At this point, I'll pull the hoof forward, put it on my hoof stand, and blend the hoof wall down to the parameter I set on the solar surface. Keeping the limb within the natural range of motion, I'll turn myself out, fold my knee over that foot so that the horse is more comfortable. Using my clinch cutter urethane hammer, I'll cut or straighten out the clinches on the outside. I may also loosen the nails from the bottom side by Putting my clinch cutter in on an angle. When I pry that shoe off, I'm going to pry between the heel of the shoe, heel of the hoof, pry back towards myself on the viable hoof wall, tap that shoe down, grab any nails I can with the pull offs. If that's not possible, I'll go with the crease nail pullers. When you do pry that off, gently go down and towards the toe, down and towards the toe, down and towards the toe. Then using a hoof pick, I'll pick in the collateral sulcus, central sulcus, around underneath where the shoe was. Using the hoof brush, I'll brush towards the toe. This helps save the edge on my hoof knives. At the point of the frog, I'm going to find a uniform tissue texture, which I find rapidly. I'll trim the bars down, clean the sole up some. Using a loop knife, Trim the collateral sulcus of the frog, central sulcus. I'll clean up the heels. To find my track or my trail for my nippers.
and then using the nippers I'm going to follow that trail around the perimeter of the hoof. And then get a more uniform wall thickness around the dorsal hoof wall or around to the front of the foot. And set the foot down and reevaluate. Alright. When I'm lifting the foot, I'm putting my thumbs in here and I can feel the collateral cartilages. They're cartilages that come up the back part of the foot on either side. And these are getting very stiff or very hard. They ossify over time in some horses. And at that point of time, there's not so much flexion in the heels of the horse. When the hoof was on the ground, I felt that the inside branch or the medial branch was just a little high yet. So when I'm rasping, I'm going to concentrate a little more on that area. In order to accurately evaluate a horse's hooves and limbs, it's so important that you have a well-lit flat area to work. There's a little bruising right there in the laminae. It could be a, an impact on the hoof wall or at the hairline some time ago. There's also bruising in this bar. And that happened as the bar was growing. Set it down and reevaluate. I'll pull the foot forward and file down to the parameter I set on the solar surface. 